Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Well, over the years I've been doing this podcast, I've received a few emails about folks who had thought about doing their own old-time radio podcast, and nothing much had come of it until now, and I wanted to let you know about not one, but two podcasts that were launched by listeners to the program featuring a different old-time radio programs, so I thought I'd let you know about them. Uh, first is, and I think I'm probably pronouncing the name wrong, but apologies, but uh, the host name, I believe, is Virgil Benny, and he, I love oldtimeradio.com, and he offers five podcast episodes per week, each uh, series in a different genre, with the series played from start to finish. The programs that he's doing includes The Shadow, My Friend Irma, Rogue's Gallery, Lots Out, and You Bet Your Life. And that's over at iloveoldtimeradio.com. And then we have Ron and Ken Eckelberger, and they're over at classiccomedyotr.com, and they bring a variety of comedy programs, three per week, and they're beginning out with... My Favorite Husband, The Bob Hope Show, and Life of Riley. So congratulations to uh, both programs. And if you want to check them out, I'd encourage you to take a listen to uh, an episode that you might enjoy. That's at iloveoldtimeradio.com and classiccomedyotr.com. Now on to today's episode of Boston Blackie. The original air date, October the 22nd, 1947. And this one is the million dollar mid-air diamond theft. Yes, come in, sir. Are you from the detective agency? Yes, sir. Evans is the name. Jack Evans at your service, sir. I hope you're a good man, Evans. No complaints so far, Mr. Wilson. I'm sure there won't be any. You're not afraid of airplanes, are you? Well, I've been up a few times without disastrous results. (laughs) Well, I think this trip will be as uneventful as an excursion. I've chartered a good plane and hired an excellent pilot. Where are we going, sir? East. Where? But I've chartered the plane for the return trip, too, so you won't be kept away from home too long. My wife's used to having me away for long stretches, Mr. Wilson. When do we leave? In two hours. You have a gun with you, of course. Oh, yes. I wouldn't think of going on a job without it. By the way, why all the precaution of taking me as a bodyguard with you, Mr. Wilson? Because of this, Mr. Evans. This diamond in my hand. Awfully small diamond, isn't it? Small, Mr. Evans. Yes. But it's worth a million (laughs) dollars. And now on to Dick Colmer as Boston Blackie, enemy to those who make him an enemy, friend to those who have no friend. Tower to flight 59, proceed on runway 6, proceed on runway 6, tower to flight 59. Yeah. There's some crazy pilot coming in on runway six unannounced. Uh, I see him. Private cabin plane. Good night. He looks like he's going to crack up, too. Tower to flight 59. Hold it. Flight 59. Hold it. Try to talk that crazy pilot on a landing, Sam. Yeah. Tower to flight 59. Turn on the crash landing signal. I'm going to have to. Here goes. Tower to flight 59. I'm going out and help pick up the pieces. Tower to flight 59. You 
crazy fool, you! Who ever taught you to land a plane? You, you made it, you fat, but I don't know how. Hey, what's the matter with you in there? You could have crashed into that transport if we hadn't seen you from the control tower. Hey, pilot, what's the matter with you? Hey, you! Huh? Oh, I... I got it down okay, huh? You got it down, but not okay with us. I'm sorry, mister. I sort of blacked out, I guess. Well, you nearly checked out and took your two passengers with you. Hey, what's the matter with them? Nothing. They're all right. Hey, are they tied up? They sure are. I'm going in the plane to see. My diamond. My diamond. What's this guy moaning about? I don't know. My Something about his diamond. diamond. Uh, he's the guy who chartered this plane. My hey, Mr. Wilson. Cow. Mr. Wilson. He's my coming my too. Hey, get those ropes off him while I untie this other guy. Yeah, sure. I what's been going on in this plane, anyhow? Well, I don't know. Told you I must have passed out. I don't know how long either. Can't remember a thing. Hey, there's a gun on this guy here. Yeah, I know. He's a private detective or something. I mean, he was a private detective or something. He's not anything now. Except dead. I've heard a lot of strange talk in this office of mine, Mr. Wilson. But this is the strangest yet. You yourself chartered the plane? Yes, Inspector Faraday, and this is the pilot I hired, Bob Johnson. Well, don't ask me what happened, Inspector Faraday. I've been trying to figure it out myself, and I just don't know. This is the craziest thing I ever heard. Three men are in a plane, 10,000 feet in the air. Two of them are knocked out and tied. One of them dies, and nobody knows what happened. Well, I know what happened. One of you is a murderer. And someone is a thief, Inspector Faraday. My diamond is missing. My million-dollar diamond. Mr. Blaine was going to pay a million dollars. I'm not interested in your diamond, Wilson. Or any Mr. Blaine. I'm interested in who killed Jack Evans. And it was probably either you or both. Now, wait a minute. Maybe there was somebody else on that plane. Well, I'd like to say there was, Inspector, but there's no room for a fourth in that plane of mine. There was nobody else in the plane. Can't we investigate the murder a little later and first try to find my diamond? We'll find the diamond. Don't worry. But how? Where? The pilot doesn't have it. I don't have it. It wasn't anywhere on Jack Evans' body, and it's not hidden anywhere in the plane. Oh, it's one of those things again. Not only does a guy get murdered in midair by the little man who wasn't there, but a million-dollar diamond disappears in midair, too. This is one of those cases for your friend Boston Blackie, Inspector. How do you know about Boston Blackie? Well, everybody knows about Blackie. Well, I don't need him. Don't either of you two leave town till you get my permission. I'm going to get to the bottom of this before I blow my top. There's Johnson's plane over there, Matthews. Let's go have a look at it. Somebody's in it, Inspector Faraday. Listen, he's gun in the engine. I know it. I know who it is, too. Johnson must have thought I was kidding when I told him not to leave town. Hey, Johnson! Johnson! He's not here, Barney! Inspector, it's Blackie. The one guy I want to leave town. Blackie, what are you doing here? Turn off that engine! What did you say, Barney? You know what I... <laughs> you, you know what I said. What are you doing here? Working on the Jack Evans murder case and trying to find Henry Wilson's diamond so I can deliver it to Mr. Blaine, who ordered it from Wilson. How do you know anything about Evans and Wilson and Blaine? Wilson called a lawyer for help, and the lawyer phoned me. No use searching Johnson's plane, Faraday. The diamond isn't here. Blackie, I could have you arrested for meddling with this plane. It's police property until, until I... the case is solved, I know. Yes. But I'm going to help you solve it. I understand the plane seemed to be in trouble when it came in for a landing. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't engine trouble. I just tested the motor, and it's okay. Well, that's the only thing about this case that is okay. Give me 24 hours and a few facts, Faraday, and you'll not only have Evans kill her, but Wilson will have his diamond. In 24 hours? Don't get excited, Inspector. The only way to find out what happened up in the air is to keep our feet on the ground. <laughs> yes, Miss Jones? Bob Johnson calling you, Mr. Blaine. Oh, thank you. Hello, Jensen. Hello, Blaine. How's the diamond business today? <laughs> Fine. How's the flying business? Couldn't be better. We sure have a lot of people baffled, don't we? <laughs> yes, we certainly do. <laughs> well, that was nice work, Jensen. You did a good job. Well, you made me a good proposition. 
Uh, you got the diamond all right, huh? Oh, yes, I have the diamond. <laughs> Everything went just as we planned. Well, I, I didn't think we'd have much trouble. It was too slick to miss. <laughs> You take care of everything else, too? Oh, yes. We have nothing to worry about except that... Well, I wish that detective with Wilson hadn't been killed. Yeah, same here, but that was an accident, Blaine, and accidents will happen. An accident can be called murder sometimes, too. The police will try to find out who killed that fellow. <laughs> They'll have to find out what happened first, and what happened to the diamond, who has it, and how he got it. And that's something they'll never do. <laughs> no, I don't suppose they will, Johnson. <laughs> Have you been questioned much? Oh, yeah. A cop named Faraday threw a million questions at me. <laughs> <laughs> He's just about gone crazy trying to figure anything out. I'll be down to talk to you in a little while. Yeah, good. So we're driving Faraday crazy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, we not only have Wilson's diamond, but we've got Faraday's goat. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mary. Guess who? What? Well, it's you. Isn't it, Blackie? Oh, wait till I look and make sure. Yes, it's me. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I was waiting for your call. And now that you've got it, you've got nothing to do, huh? Mm-hmm. Do you have time to meet me, Mary? Of course. What's going on? You and I are going on to a visit a certain Mr. Blaine. He's the fellow who ordered the diamond, which was stolen from that fellow Wilson on the mysterious plane trip. Oh, why are we going to see him? The most important reason is to see whether he can throw any light on what happened to the diamond, because that will tell us who killed the private detective. And maybe tell us how all of that was accomplished while a plane was in the air, huh? Perhaps. Good enough reason for your going to see Blaine? I know one just as good. What? I'm going to be with you. How much longer will it be before I can see Mr. Blaine? Well, any minute now, I'm sure, sir. Well, I hope so. Mary, you don't have to wait with me if you don't want to. Well, I don't mind, Blackie. I don't have an appointment for three hours. Oh, maybe this Mr. Blaine's saying you'll see you. Yes, Mr. Blaine? I'll see that fellow Blackie now, Miss Jones. Yes, Mr. Blaine. Oh, sir. Mr. Blaine will see you now. I'll go right in. Oh, thank you. Come on, Mary. Are you sure you don't uh, want me to wait outside? Oh, I don't see why you should. Come in, Jack. Come in. Come in. Mr. Blaine? That's right. Uh, Mr. Blaine, Miss Wesley? Miss Wesley, Mr. Blaine. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Blaine? I wasn't expecting a beautiful young woman when Miss Jones said Boston Blackie was here to see me. Oh, thank you, kind sir. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever knows what to expect from Boston Blackie. Oh, I think Mr. Blaine has a vague idea of why I'm here. Oh, no, Blackie, I don't. Oh, I thought perhaps you'd heard from Henry Wilson's lawyer. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I expect to hear from Henry Wilson any minute now. How do you happen to know about Wilson? Well, you might say I'm working for him, Mr. Blaine. Oh, yeah. find out who murdered his bodyguard and stole his million-dollar diamond. I read about that in the papers. <laughs> Too bad. I understand from Wilson that he was bringing it here to show you. Yes, he was. It was a small diamond, Mr. Blaine. Why was it worth so much money? Because it's the one diamond I need to complete a match set that I can sell for a million dollars. It has a very peculiar cut that can't be duplicated. Without that diamond, the set will not be bought by a certain party. I see. Ah. Well, who besides you knew that Wilson was flying that diamond here? I don't know one that I know of, but <laughs> the walls have ears. The news might have leaked out, or someone might have been listening in when I made arrangements on the phone with Wilson. You arranged for the chartered plane at Wilson? I told Wilson where he could charter a plane, yeah. And where he could get a bodyguard? That's right, Blackie. Where's the diamond? I don't know. Maybe the same place Evans' killer is, still somewhere up there in the clouds. But you said something interesting a second ago. Oh, I did? About somebody listening in on your calls. I'm going to talk to your secretary. <laughs> Miss Jones has been my secretary for five years, and I've never had any reason to mistrust her. Oh, now, Blackie, that girl looks so sweet and innocent. It's the sweet and innocent ones who sometimes are the guilty ones, Mary. Call her in here a minute, will you, Mr. Blaine? I'd like to talk to her. Of course. You mean, uh, look at her, don't you? <laughs> now, Mary. <laughs> uh, Miss Jones. Miss Jones. Maybe she left her desk for a minute. Well, she never does that without telling me. What's the matter with her? Miss Jones. Miss Jones. Oh, I'll go out and talk to her. If she's there, Blackie. She's here, all right. Miss Jones, didn't you hear that buzzer? Maybe she's hard of hearing, Blackie, except when she's listening in on phone conversation. Could be. Look, Miss Jones, I... Uh-oh. What's the matter, Blackie? 
Mary, did you say maybe Miss Jones couldn't hear well? Yes. Well, she isn't breathing well either. In fact, she's out of breath. She's dead. Now, back to Boston Blackie. A million-dollar diamond is being flown across country in a chartered plane when apparently all three occupants of the ship black out. When the pilot, still in a daze, lands the plane, his two passengers are tied up, and the diamond is missing. What's more, one of the passengers is dead from a blow on the head. Later, Boston Blackie visits Bill Blaine, the man to whom the diamond was to have been sold. Blackie suspects Blaine's secretary, Marilyn Jones, of perhaps being involved in the mystery, but when he steps out of Blaine's office to question her, she is dead. As we return to our story, Blackie is in Inspector Faraday's office. You like this case, don't you, Blackie? It's impossible, so you like it. Well, that could account for my liking you, too, Inspector. No, I'm impossible. Look, do you know I could have you thrown out of here? You're bothering me. I can't think while you're here, so you're... You're obstructing justice. I'll be so sorry in the morning. Listen, Faraday, let's get down to the facts. Three people, and only three, were in that plane. Brilliant. Positively brilliant. I don't know how you do it. You're obstructing my logic, but unfortunately, that's no crime. Yeah. Now, get this. We know that the private detective didn't engineer this gimmick because he's dead. You continue to amaze me. It couldn't be Wilson, the guy who owned the diamond. He'd have no reason for stealing something that was already his. So, who does that leave? It leaves me with you. And don't think I'm not sorry about the whole thing. Now, beat it, Blackie. Leave me alone. Under normal circumstances, it would be a pleasure to leave you alone, Inspector. This circumstance is normal enough. It's just mixed up. And you want to know something? When you're around, I'm mixed up, too. Well, what's your excuse when I'm not here? Well, so long, Faraday. I'm on my way. Good. I promise not to interfere with you until this case is solved. That's better. You see, I've got a phone call to make at the airport. After I make it, maybe I'll know a little bit more about this mystery. You know, instead of being up in the air on this case, I'm going to find out what happened in the air on that plane. Pretty quiet up here in the control tower, ain't it, Joe? Won't be in a couple of minutes when Flight 81 comes in from the west. Take it easy. There'll be plenty to do in a... I'll grab it. Control tower. Hello, this is Boston Blackie. You don't know me. Who don't know you? Everybody knows you, Blackie. Oh, thanks. That's the nearest I ever got to somebody asking for my autograph. Well, what's on your mind, Blackie? Well, first of all, were you on the control tower when that private plane came in yesterday? The one with the dead guy on it? Sure I was. Why? Your report says that it came in sideways and almost cracked up. I want to know if anything else unusual happened with it. Well, nothing at all, except it was supposed to have come from the west, wasn't it? So I understand. Well, it came in from the northeast, Blackie, and the wind wasn't coming from that direction, so that wasn't the reason. Oh? Another thing, we got a complaint. A plane, probably the one you're asking about, was flying awfully low about 50 miles northeast of here, a place called Holly Hills, just about a half hour before that plane came bouncing in. Oh, that's great. Thanks, pal. That plane coming from the west to right from the northeast, huh? Yeah. Maybe it wasn't on the beam, but believe me, I am now. <laughs> Blackie, you got a light? Uh, sure, Matthews. Anything to help out the police force. There you are. One light, by courtesy of my last birthday. And uh, my birthday present. <laughs> That's right, Mary. Pardons, Blackie. Now we go on looking, huh? Yes, we've covered most of Holly Hills with that metal detector you brought, Matthews, but so far, no results. You sure Mr. Blaine owns this estate, Blackie? Positive, Mary. I checked. And this estate is 50 miles northeast of the airport. That checks with a tip a fellow in the control tower gave me. This adds up too well to be wrong. Bring that metal detector over here, Matthews, and let's try going down this side of the hedge, huh? Better be along here somewhere, Blackie. We've covered just about all there is of Blaine's estate. Oh, what if he didn't bury it on his own property? Mary, don't make this case any tougher than it is. No. Ready to go down this side of the hedge, Matthews? Sure, Blackie. 
You sure this was Inspector Faraday's idea? It's a good idea, isn't it? Well, yeah, but... Uh... but then it doesn't matter who suggested it as long as we find what we're looking for. How will we know when we found it, Blackie? The metal detector will buzz when Matthews swings the indicator over metal buried in the ground. If there's any metal buried in the ground, well, here we go. Hey, I've got my fingers crossed. Let's just hope the indicator crosses metal, Mary. Uh-oh. It's just crossed hey. something, Blackie. Good. Exactly hey, look, what I expected. Blackie. The ground there it looks as if it's been dug up. And filled in again. Maybe I haven't been lugging this shovel around for nothing. Want some help, Blackie? No, thanks, Matthews. Brown soft. You must come up and dig in my flower boxes sometime, Blackie. <laughs> thanks, Mary. Uh oh. It's something. Rang the bell, huh? Uh huh. It's what I'm looking for. Oh, say, uh, give me a hand lifting this thing out, will you, Matthews? Oh, sure, Blackie. Uh, hey, what in the world is that, Blackie? It's what I was looking for, Mary. And it tells me everything I want to know. Now, look, Blaine, I came here to your house to tell you I want more dough than you're giving me. I deserve it. I took all the risks. What risks, Johnson? There aren't any risks. No? That detective uh, with Wilson got killed, and I'll take the rap for it if we get found out. Who's going to find us out? Somebody will, laughing boy. (laughs) Laughing, boy. (laughs) Now, listen. Your secretary knew all about us, didn't she? Sure, but she's dead. Yeah, yeah, she's dead, thanks to me. And that's another reason I want more dough. I didn't expect to kill anyone on this job. No one asked you to do any killing. No? No. Private Dick was an accident, but I had to kill your secretary. When I came to see you, she told me she knew all about us. She listened in when you phoned me and when we made the plans to steal the diamond. She wanted 50% of the profits to keep her mouth shut. We could have made a deal with her. I gave her the only safe deal. Now, Blaine, I want more dough. Look, Johnson, you're being fairly paid, and there's nothing to worry about from the police. Nothing to worry about. No one can figure out who killed Evans and Miss Jones, or who has the diamond, or how it disappeared. We're completely in the clear. Well, I'm glad you think so. Mind a correction, Blaine? Blackie! You're right, Blaine, when you told me uh, in your office that the walls have ears. But so do I, and I like what I just heard. Now, do you and Johnson here want to come quietly, or shall we be noisy about it? I'll take care of this guy, Blaine. He's just my size. Quiet, Johnson. (laughs) Ah, nice work, Blaine. Uh, I think you cracked his head with that smoke. (laughs) A gun butt is harder than any man's head, Johnson. Well, we used the gun butt on him. When do we use the other end of it? Not here. When he wakes up, we'll take him for a ride in my car. Yeah. And then he'll stay awake yeah. for a little while before he goes to sleep permanently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gently, boys, gently. Oh, why don't you stop? Oh, this blackie's awful heavy, Mr. Blaine. How much longer do we have to carry him? Yes, to my car. It's only a little way down the road. Good. Gentlemen, I'm not heavy. It's those ropes that you've got me tied up with. Just carry me once around the park, and then I'll dismiss you. Uh, you made one mistake, you know. Yeah? Why, wise guy? You left my fingers free. When you get me to the car, I can communicate with anybody passing by using the sign language. Some sense of humor. Okay, Johnson, here we are. Stop him. Hey, don't! Oh! You know, for a minute, Blackie, I thought you'd bounce. You mean I didn't? Well, Mr. Blaine, here we are. What goes now? You put him on the floor on the back of the car, drive the car out to the airport, and take care of Mr. Boston Blackie because he's too nosy. How did you find out about us, Blackie? Little bird told me, an owl. <laughs> awfully wise, you know. Put him in the car. I'm getting tired of his talk. Here, lift. Right. Oh, because... Open the car door. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, let me throw him in the back. Hey, take it easy. I'm fragile. Throw him in. Oh. Oh. You ought to be happy. You can still feel pain. Come on, boss. In the front. All right. Too bad you can't enjoy the scenery from back there, Blackie. I can see enough from the floor. Pretty rug you threw me on here. If I'd known you were going to land on top of it, I'd have loaded it with nails. Temper, temper. Ah, uh, shut up. Let's go, Blake. Uh. So, you know, uh, this job sure called for a lot of killing, Blaine. 
The price goes up each time. Now, you can't complain to me about this one, Johnson. You're in on this as much as I am. We'll talk about that some other time. Comfortable back there, Blackie? Oh, very. Johnson, do you smell smoke? Yeah, yeah a little. Well, maybe we just passed the bonfire or something. Smoke's coming from back here, kiddies. Hey, Blaine, look, Blackie's untied. Blackie, how did you get out of those ropes? I'll write your letter. And don't look around here to find out what made that fire. I've got to find out. Look out, Blaine, we're heading for a tree. I can't stop it. Okay, both of you, don't move. I can't move very well. That steering wheel got me in the chest. Fracture that laugh of yours, I can see that. Good thing. It's getting rather annoying. But the crash did give me a break. Let me lean over and borrow this gun of yours. How, how did you get out of those ropes, Blackie? I cannot tell a lie. I did it with my little cigarette lighter. Uh, you see, uh, you left my fingers free. I reached the lighter, snapped it on, and burned the ropes. But the fire's out now. Let's get down to headquarters and see if Faraday's in. If you're a good boy, Faraday, I'll tell you exactly what the story is on this case. With gestures. Uh, what happens if I'm a bad boy, Blackie? No gestures. Now, listen. I found out that the plane, which was supposed to have come from the west, came into the airport from the northeast. Why? It's his story, and he asked me questions. Well, because it was supposed to come in from that direction. And it was supposed to fly low over Holly Hills, and it did. Mm hmm. Send the pilot Johnson a fan letter. I'll send him a fan letter, because that's where you just put him. Amusing. Listen, Faraday. I used the police department's metal detector on Blaine's estate in Holly Hills, and I found something he buried. You know what it was? A bone. He's really part dog. It was an oxygen tank and mask. Bob Johnson flew his plane high enough to make Wilson and Jack Evans black out. But he didn't pass out because he used an oxygen mask. Only he didn't want it found in the plane when he landed, so he ducked it over Holly Hills by arrangement. And Blaine found it by arrangement and buried it. But I found it where he buried it because I suspected that's exactly what he'd done. The only way that air fantasy could have been accomplished, actually. Mm -hmm. The pilot, Johnson, didn't black out of, at all. He went back in the plane to remove the diamond from Wilson, only Jack Evans was still conscious and saw him. So Johnson had to kill him. The diamond was dropped with the oxygen mask on Blaine's estate. But not buried with it. We picked up the diamond in Blaine's safe after you brought him and Johnson into headquarters. That ends that, I guess. Uh, thanks for your help, Blackie. You're perfectly welcome, Inspector. Uh, here, let me uh, light that cigarette for you. Why use that cigarette lighter? Those darn things never work. Hmm. I guess they're like a certain police inspector. Never work. Until there's something important to do. <laughs> This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Well, apparently Faraday is so much into the habit of ribbing Boston Blackie that if he doesn't get enough ribbing in while Blackie's solving the case, he'll wait till after the case to get his quota in. All right, well, that will actually do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar. We'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Boston Blackie. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>